Steve Kim for UCN Live. We're here with the new WBO middleweight champion of the world, Andy Lee. Andy, first of all, just can you even describe your emotions? Um, well, they keep, everyone keeps telling me oh, it hasn't sunk in yet, but I'm pretty cool about it. And um, I'm just enjoying the moment, being in the moment. And it feels good. It feels good. It's what I've worked for my whole life. And um, it'll probably be a couple of days before I really just sit back and enjoy it. I'm kind of still in a rush at the moment. Andy, after five rounds, as you're sitting in the corner, Adam Booth is talking to you. How did you feel the fight was going at that point? Did you have the sense the fight was close or that you were down on the scorecards? Yeah, I thought I was maybe a couple of rounds down. And the rounds were even, but there wasn't a lot of action. But when we were trading, there were heavy punches being thrown. And so both of us were a bit um, tentative. We were kind of taking our time because we knew there was danger. Mm -hmm. um, but I could see he was slowing down. He was breathing heavier. And I watched these fights and saw the pattern that he slows down in the second half. And I was up, up in my activity, and I knew we were going to exchange sooner or later. So, Andy, would, uh, what I saw early on, both of you guys were very tense. Would you agree with that assessment? Yeah, but like I said, we were, there was a lot of heavy punches being thrown. Like mm -hmm. it, it might not come across on camera or in the flesh, but I certainly felt his power, and I know he felt mine because I saw him hurt in the third round. And um, it's a tactical fight, you know what I mean? It's like a lot on stake. He's he's undefeated, and this was his big chance, and it was my last chance. I knew this. You really was think it was your last chance? I wasn't gonna, like if I had lost this fight, where was I going to go from there? Mm -hmm. you know, at a world level, and I don't think I'll ever be the type of fighter just to hang around and be a mm -hmm. be a contender. If I can't couldn't be keep winning and be champion, then so there was a lot on the line, and the fight was tense, and we were both tense, yeah. Andy, as you look back, we talked about this a few days ago, uh, winning this fight in honor of Emmanuel Stewart. How much of a part of his, of his spirit lives with you on a day-to-day -day basis, you think? Uh, the influence he had on me, not just in boxing, but in my life, is, is immeasurable, it's immense. Um, I don't, like I said, I can't even cook breakfast without thinking about him or being influenced by something he said or something he showed me how to, you know, how to make your eggs like this or, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, just, just simple little things and that he knew and he learned and picked up in the gyms and it, it was from life and things that he showed me and I still, still do them today, habits. Andy, it's been a bumpy journey though. This has not been a smooth ride for you, going back to the Brian Vera rematch uh, that you never got after that stunning first loss. Uh, just a fight ago, you were down 5 nothing. I think, to Julius Jackson uh, early on or John Jackson. Um, have you thought about the journey as you finally arrived to the destination of a world championship? Um, I knew it's like, it's an unbelievable st story. Um, a white kid from Ireland, like going to Detroit and training with a legend like I managed to, but not having it all. Like it, it's been tough, tough road on, like you said, it's not been smooth and, and um, losses along the way. But I um, had a belief in myself that I would be here one day. Mm -hmm. And with the help of Adam Booth, built on what Emmanuel started, I'm here. Final question, I know a lot of people want to talk to you. You just announced that your first title defense will be in Ireland. I'm sure that'll be a very big event. But I know the other question people want to ask you, the fight that you thought you had in April before some personal problems of Gennady Golovkin popped up. In 2015, do you believe you'll eventually have a unification bout with Triple G? Triple G is by far the best middleweight in the world. I, and I have a lot of respect for him, but I have no fear of him. And I'd be happy to fight him in 2015. Okay, there he is, the brand new champ, Andy Lee, doing it for Mr. Kronk, Emmanuel Stewart. This is Steve Kim for UCN Live. <laughs>